Hello from Seoul, let me guess, you're a big fan of Korean fried chicken, but you may think it's getting tired of eating the same fried chicken. Nah, it's impossible, what am I talking about? Anyway, if you're craving some Korean fried chicken, but you want something new, then you came to the right place. Today, I dare say, you will experience a whole new world. Alright, let's get started. Today, we are making kampungi, spicy garlic fried chicken. Usually, you can have this at Korean Chinese restaurants, and since it has so much flavor like spicy, sweet, savory, and tangy, you're gonna love it so much. For this, you will need green onion, garlic, bell pepper, a small amount of ginger, and some chicken. Since it doesn't need many ingredients, you already like it. Right? For information, kampungi is usually made with chicken, but depending on your preference, you can make it with pork or beef. You like seafood? Then try it with shrimp. It's okay. You're a vegetarian? Then try it with tofu. Whatever you use, everything will turn out fantastic, so no worries. First of all, let's start with batter. In a mixing bowl, put 3 quarter cups of potato starch and make it flat. And then gently add some cold water here. Some of you might wanna ask, Aaron, how much water should I put? My answer is is it doesn't really matter. Just put as much as you want, but don't quote a fire throw or something. It doesn't need that much. And what's really important here is you should never ever stir this because all we need is just some wet starch. That's it. What? You already stirred this? Sorry about that. There's nothing much I can do about it. You should wait for an hour instead of five minutes. So just leave it alone and let it rest until you can't see any bubbles. But if your friend is making this and you want to torture them, then run to your friend and and give that a good mix. But don't blame me after you get punched or something. While it's having a great time, let's prep our chicken. I'm using chicken thighs because I think it works best, but if you prefer chicken breast, go ahead and use that. No problem at all. Since I'm removing the skin, some of you might say, Aaron, you really don't know how to eat. That's the most delicious part of chicken. I know, and I'm a big fan of it too, but I have to get rid of it because of Claire, because she doesn't like it. If you're married, you know what I'm talking about. This is how I survive. So I would appreciate it if you leave mean comments only to Claire, not me. Thank you in advance. Cut 200 grams of chicken thighs into bite-sized pieces. About an inch would be perfect. Since we're gonna cut them in a batter, they will get bigger after deep frying. So if your mouth isn't bigger than our taste tester, I want you to cut them into small pieces. Otherwise, you're not gonna be pretty when you have a bite. Once you're done, put them in a large mixing bowl and add some salt and pepper. When people make kampungi, they usually skip the seasoning and make the sauce quite salty. But I'm gonna add a little bit of seasoning, but not too much. And then if you have marinade at home, add one teaspoon of it. It's gonna be more flavorful. Now, let's prep our vegetables. First, Finally dice some bell peppers. Since they add more color to your dish, I recommend using two colors, green and red. Trust me, these guys will make your photos Instagram worthy. But if you wanna make it spicier and want some extra kick, then you can switch these up with some chili peppers. Normally, I prefer to use chili peppers, but for those of you who can't handle spicy food, I'll go with these guys today. Next, green onion. Cut some green onion into small pieces, but make sure to include the white part because all the good flavor is in here. Then what about the green part? Don't worry about it. You can use it for garnish. Remember, greens always make your food look fancy. And then bring 7 cloves of garlic. A lot of recipes say you can just slice it, but that way you can fully enjoy its amazing fragrance. So I want you to give them a good smash and then chop them into small pieces. You will see a whole new world. Lastly, finely minced 3 grams of ginger. If you're not feeling super confident with your knife skills, using a grater is a good option. Option. But if you wanna play a prank on somebody, chop it into big pieces or add the whole ginger and say it's garlic. It's gonna be so much fun, but if something happens, I'm not responsible. Alright, let's make the sauce. Put one and a half tablespoons of sugar, two tablespoons of mirin or any kind of cooking wine, one tablespoon of soy sauce, one tablespoon of oyster sauce, three tablespoons of vinegar, three tablespoons of water and give it a good mix. Oh, I forgot to add some white pepper here. So I'm gonna add a half teaspoon of it. Normally, Restaurants use stock instead of just water, but since we don't have much time for that, let's add a half tablespoon of chicken powder here. It's gonna give us more flavor, but if you don't have this, add a little bit of MSG. 
Now let's get back to our starch. As you can see, the water on top looks very clear and all the starch settled down on the bottom. And this is exactly what you're looking for. All you need to do is just get rid of this water on top. That's it. So simple, right? Now we've got our batter. Take it out with your spoon and break it into pieces over your chicken. And then give it a good massage. Because it's not easy to mix, if you add water here, you might get the crispy chicken in your next life. Maybe next next life. So instead of water, add half of an egg white and mix everything together. Alright, everything is all set. Let's fry the chicken. Add some oil in a wok and place it over medium heat. We're gonna add in our chicken when it's 170 degrees Celsius or 340 degrees Fahrenheit. But you don't have a thermometer? Don't worry about it. Just wait until it gets nice and hot and take off a piece of batter and drop it in. If it slowly floats after 3 seconds, that's the time. When you're ready, make sure to mix it again and carefully drop it in and fry them for about five minutes what's really important here is that you should do this one by one otherwise they're gonna stick each other and you will see something weird at the end even if you did one by one they stuck together don't worry about it that's okay if you freak out and try to separate them now you will end up with some tatered or naked chicken so just leave them alone for about four minutes or until they get crispy on the outside and then scoop it out and hit it with a spatula then they will naturally naturally separate from each other. FYI, this kind of action also makes little cracks in the batter, which means the moisture from the meat inside will come out and make the chicken really crispy. This is a really useful technique. What are you doing? Take some nuts. If time's up, take them out and let them rest on a cooling rack. Since it looks so crispy, you will be tempted to eat this now. But my answer is no, because all the moisture inside will wet the batter soon. Plus, we're gonna coat this chicken with a watery sauce at the end, which means it will get soggier, right? So to get the chicken really crispy, what I'm gonna do today is a triple fry, not a double fry. When you see the oil, if it's still bubbling away with a noise, you should not add in your chicken because those bubbles are caused by the moisture from your meat and batter and that will prevent us from reaching the right temperature. So make sure to wait until there's no more sound from the oil. Of course, this whole process has to be done with a heat on. Now I'm gonna do a second fry at 170 degrees Celsius or 300 140 degrees Fahrenheit for about 3 minutes. Alright, once again, remove them from the oil and let them rest. And meanwhile, let's make the sauce. Put 2 tablespoons of chili oil and add the vegetables. If you wanna make it spicier, then add some dried chilies like me. These guys will give you that extra kick. And then stir it for about a minute or until you can smell the amazing aroma from the garlic and green onions. Once they start to smell real nice, pour the sauce we made and bring it to a boil for about 2 minutes. Now now all we have left is just give it a triple fry for about 3 minutes and add it to the sauce. That's it. When you touch your chicken after a triple fry, they will be super crunchy, almost like rocks. But don't worry about it, you're good to go. Once again, place it over high heat and when it starts to bubble up again, put the chicken into the sauce and toss everything together for about 30 seconds. Alright, it's done. Turn the heat off and add 1 teaspoon of sesame oil and mix it around. Transfer it to a serving plate and garlic. Garnish the top with greens like green onions or cilantro. And lastly, finish it off with some sesame seeds. That's it. How does it look? If possible, I wish I could send this aroma through your screen. But don't worry about it. Still, I can't show you how it tastes. Alright, let's call our taste tester. Claire? Kampungi! You know what? I didn't have many chances to try this kampungi because it was considered like quite fancy and expensive Korean Chinese food. When you see the menu at Korean Chinese restaurant, Tangsuyu was always top on the menu, but this kampungi was far, far down there. So I felt like it's so expensive. So I couldn't even think of ordering this. For real, it was quite expensive. But today, look at this. I've got lots of kampungi. I feel like I'm so rich or something. So excited. Let me try it. Mmm, 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 The sauce is amazing. It is spicy, sweet, savory, tangy. You've got everything. So good. It's 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 so 
야채가 있고 갈릭을 많이 올려서 음, 음, 음. 모든 하나하나의 조각에다가 마늘에 조금 더 얹어서 먹으면 진짜 맛있을 것 같은데 마늘이 좀 부족하다 나한테 더 많이 있었으면 더 맛있었을 것 같다 하나에 마늘 한 3개 정도는 올려줘야지 <웃음> 아 이거는 진짜 맥주랑 먹어야 될것 같은데 나는? 이거 짜장면 짬뽕이 아니야 맥주랑 궁합이 잘 맞아 맥주를 가져와라 Bring some beer 오랜만에 <웃음> Today I showed you spicy garlic fried chicken As you can see this fried chicken is totally different from regular Korean fried chicken but super delicious in a different way So if you're getting tired of classic Korean fried chicken it can be a good option for you As soon as you take a bite you will see yourself saying that's the stuff Alright, this is it for today and I'll see you next time